Hello, and thank you for joining us uh, for the virtual college exploration today here uh, by the Illinois Association for College Admissions and Counseling. Um, we are here today with Governor State. Um, so a few things before I turn it over to them, um, just a couple of things about this webinar. Um, you are able to ask questions uh, through the Q&A uh, uh, bar at the bottom of your, your Zoom. Um, any questions submitted there will be um, seen by the counselor and be answered as well. You will not be able to share your camera or turn your microphone on. Both of those functions have been disabled for this. So any questions that you do have will need to be submitted through that Q&A. Um, there are different sessions going on for different colleges and institutions, and you can check out more of those presentations offered through our schedule at iacac.org. And as a reminder, this, uh, this session is being recorded and will be available as all sessions are being recorded and they'll be available at the iacac.org website. So I am gonna stop sharing my video now and I'm gonna turn it over to Governor State. Hello everyone, um, welcome to Governor State's presentation. My name is Karina Hernandez and I'm one of the recruiting specialists at Governor State's Office of Admission. Um, one moment, I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, um, so up on the screen, you can see our um, beautiful campus. For those of you who aren't too familiar with Governor State, we're a four-year public university in the south suburbs of Chicago. So right about 30 or 40 minutes from downtown, we're also accessible through um, the Metro station. We're the last stop on the Metro electric line. Um, so it's definitely um, pretty close to Chicago, but we are in the suburbs. My, again, my name is Karina Hernandez and I'm one of the recruiting specialists. Um, you can see my contact information up on the screen and that is my um, direct office line. And right now, although we are working remotely for the most part, I still have access to um, my GSU phone from Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. So that is still the um, one of the best ways to reach me. And um, also I am a GSU graduate as well. And I'm happy to um, be able to let others know about Governor State. So definitely if you have any questions about the student experience, um, please let me know either um, today or um, by reaching out to me at a later time. Um, so just a little bit more background. We were founding, founded in 1969. We have about 5,000 students. So if you're looking for a school that's between small and mid-size, this would be a really great place for you, especially if you're used to very small classes. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to 1, and our classes wouldn't be over about 25, 30 students for most cases. Um, so if you're used to having a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one attention or if you're looking for a school that would have these small classes, it would be a really great choice. We have over 49,000 alumni and um, a couple of things that are very unique about Governor State is that um, we have a very large first generation college student population and then we also have a large transfer student population. Um, so specifically with transfers, we actually used to be a um, transfer university. So students would transfer to us once they finished up with um, community college. And then in 2014, we opened our doors to freshmen and sophomores as well, and not just um, students at the junior level and above. So um, we have a history of serving transfer students and um, we're very happy to have staff and to have faculty that are familiar with how to serve these student populations. We also have over 20 countries represented in our student body. So um, we do accept international students as well. As far as what types of programs we have, we have a variety, but um, our largest college is our College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and then with the next biggest one being a College of Health and Human Services. A couple of our most popular majors are business, um, interdisciplinary studies and psychology.
For freshman students, the way that our freshman program is set up is that students would declare a major and then um, they would be placed into one of the seven focus areas to complete their general education courses. Um, so what this basically means is that depending on your major, you would be placed in general education courses with students that have a um, similar career field. Um, so that way, you know, even though it's a general education course, you can still meet people that have very similar career goals and it's a little bit easier to um, build community. And then you would also, students would also work with an academic advisor then to develop a schedule. Our freshman classes are capped at 30 students, so you wouldn't be in a class that's larger than that. And then um, we also have a honors program that is invitation only. So if you are invited to that program, either as a freshman or as a transfer, I would highly recommend joining it. It offers a lot of different opportunities um, with like leadership and different um, opportunities to professionally develop yourself as well. One of the uh, services that we um, offer to all of our students that come in as a freshman that's been especially helpful during this time is that we do offer students a free laptop that's given out during the first week of classes. And this free laptop is um, already included in tuition and fee, so there is no extra charge. And students do get to keep this laptop even if um, they decide to go to a different school or they, um, for some whatever reason, they don't complete their four years, this laptop is still for students to keep. Students also have a locked in tuition rate for 12 consecutive semesters. Um, this past year, our tuition hasn't changed, um, but I will talk a little bit more about that in um, the upcoming slides. And then the number of credits that we recommend for students to finish in four years is 15 credits, but we also offer summer courses as well. So this is a little bit more about our um, seven year or, or seven different focus areas. So for example, um, we have you know, arts and entertainment, business and discovery is if students are undecided. So for example, um, students that are apply or are study, who are studying accounting um, will be in the same focus area as students who are studying business administration. So they would be in that business um, focus area and they would take general education courses with students in very similar fields. All right, um, so apart from academics, there are a lot of different ways to get involved on campus. We have different ways to get involved with um, athletics. We have student government. We have very active honor societies. For our athletic teams, we are in the NAIA division. Um, so in case you're wondering about that, we have different ways to um, also get employed around campus and different cultural clubs. And then again, because it's a small to mid-sized school, it's pretty easy to get involved on campus and pretty easy to um, be able to meet other people and find out all the different resources that Governor State offers to get involved. And I would highly, highly recommend that whether you end up um, coming to Governor State or if you end up at another institution, I would definitely recommend to get involved around campus um, because this is a really great way to both find mentors and to make friends as well and feel more connected to your campus. So again, our teams are in the NAIA division. Right now, um, the sports that we have are basketball for men and women, cross country, golf, volleyball, and soccer. The only team in which we have a women's team but don't have a men's team is, a, is volleyball. The rest of the teams we have a both a men's team and then a women's team. Our newest sport is soccer, which just opened up last fall. So we are very excited to offer that now. And then our most popular sport is basketball um, for men. And we were conference champions in 2018, conference tournament champions. And we earned our first ever bid to the NAIA national tournament in 2018 as well. Um, so we are very excited about that. We do offer the option of living on campus. Um, although we do offer that option, it is not mandatory. Even for freshmen, we do not require students to live on campus. Um, so this is a really great way if you're looking to save some costs, especially if you live close to campus or you live um, driving distance away, this might be something to um, check out. We have different ways to, um, we have different, uh, dorm arrangements, so they're definitely, um, we definitely try to accommodate for all the different 
class levels, as you will see on the next slide. So the, on the left up on the screen is our sweet style dorm, and this is our most popular option and especially the most popular option for freshmen and sophomore students. It's also our cheapest option. So it's a sweet style dorm and it's a uh, two person bedroom and it's connected to another two person bedroom by a bathroom. So we don't have any community bathrooms, which our students are very excited uh, when they find out. Um, this would be the um, again, this would be the cheapest option. Um, and then on the right, you can see our second most popular option, which is our four bedroom apartment. It's each person to a single bedroom. So four people to an apartment, one person per bedroom. And um, typically students by their sophomore year are living in one of the four bedroom apartments. Um, and our students are very happy about that um, because it's, it's not always um, the case of different universities. So we are very um, happy to offer students this option. Also for spring of 2021, our housing um, is still open. Um, last I heard, we still have spaces and our housing um, was still open through for, well, this semester we still had housing um, available. So as we're still just following the CDC guidelines and making sure that we are offering students a safe way to live on campus. Um, so it will likely continue that way through um, spring as well. As far as our cost, our cost has not changed from last year. It's $12,616 for tuition and fees per school year. Um, so that is without including housing. And then we have different types of scholarships that we offer. One of our most popular scholarship is our Aim High um, scholarship. Right now, the graph that you can see on the screen is for our freshman students. Um, for our AIM High scholarships. It's a little bit different for transfer students, so definitely keep that in mind if you're looking at the um, chart. This is only for um, freshman students and the qualifications are different for transfer students, but we do offer AIM High scholarships for transfer students as well. So these are based on GPA, and then you also have to be, um, in order to receive a scholarship as a freshman, you also have to be directly admitted. Um, so later on, we'll talk a little bit more about our direct admission guidelines, but it would be for students at least at a 2.75 unweighted GPA, um, both for scholarships and both for admission, we look at unweighted GPA. And then we would require at least a 980 SAT or a um, 19 ACT. So um, this past fall, we were test optional if students were over a 2.75. But even though we were test optional for admission, we still required it for scholarships as well. And um, this will continue to be the case for spring. Um, for freshmen, we are still um, test optional unless um, if students are over a 2.75. But again, um, if you're wanting to, hoping to get a scholarship, I would recommend to um, keep in mind that we will still need those scores in order for the scholarship to apply. There are a few other guidelines apart from this, but these are the main ones. Definitely check out our website under AIM High to make sure that you qualify. You also have to fill out a FAFSA and have complete a few other requirements. So definitely check that out or contact me afterwards. Um, but these are renewable for four years. So on the right hand side, the big number that you see is the number that you would be awarded for four years and the number under it is how much it would cover annually. So for example, if you're at a 2.75 and above, you would receive $3,000 annually if you qualify. And if you're at a 3.75 and above, then you would receive $6,000 annually, which is a pretty generous amount um, considering that our tuition and fees is 12,616 per school year. So um, right off the bat, if you qualify for this, um, you wouldn't have to apply. This would be something that would be automatically applied to your financial aid package if you're eligible. And that would knock off, let's say you're at a 3.75 and above, that would knock off $6,000 annually already um, without any other financial aid included. So definitely something to um, keep in mind as you're um, either finishing up this school year or finishing up the semester, try and get those, um, keep those grades up. All right, so a couple of examples, again, like I talked about, um, if you 
for example, let's say you have a high school GPA of an unweighted 3.75, it's you'd receive $6,000 annually, your remaining tuition and fees would be 6,616 um, and so on. You can see the different examples there. And these are um, based on if you were taking 30 credit hours per year, so that would be 15 credit hours per semester. These are a couple more of our eligibility uh, criteria. I won't go too far into depth about it, but um, it's basically if you have attended an Illinois high school, you have to be enrolled first time to get your bachelor's degree. Um, be a resident of Illinois, you have to meet our full admissions criteria, um, and so on. Apart from this, we also have first, for freshman students, we also have first year competitive scholarships. And um, we have the presidential provost and dean scholarships, which are our highest um, scholarships with the highest of those being the presidential. And this is basically um, a scholarship, the presidential one was basically a scholarship that would cover everything you would need. It would cover full tuition and fees, housing, it would, um, uh, cover a meal plan and then also a book scholarship. So pretty much everything you would need, the presidential scholarship would um, cover. So that is definitely our highest honor. And then um, we also have our provost and our dean scholarships, which are a little bit less than that, but they are combinable, let's say, with um, the AIM High scholarship. So in the past, we have had students, you know, that receive the provost and the dean scholarships, which don't cover as much as the presidential, but they're able to combine it with their AIM High scholarship, and then it covers a pretty decent amount of, of their tuition and fees um, and what they will need. So it is still open for fall of 2021. Um, it's open again for freshman students. So for students to qualify, they have to be admitted by November 8th, 2020 and they have to have at least a 3.75 unweighted GPA and go through an interview process. Um, it goes through several stages, so that's why we, it's important that students are admitted by that November 8th deadline, so that, that way we can have a, um, enough time to go through that process. Um, typically by early spring, students would find out if they've received it or not, um, and it's the same interview process for the presidential provost and the deans. Um, so as long as they fill out that one application, it would apply for that presidential provost and the deans, but there's definitely some additional documents needed for that as well. So um, if you have questions about that or if you need guidance for the process, please, please contact me. Um, especially I would recommend to do it soon just because uh, we are um, coming up pretty close to that November 8th deadline. We also have different talent-based scholarships. Um, so of course we have athletic scholarships, uh, but we also have different scholarships in the arts. So for example, creative writing, media, theater and performance, et cetera. They all have different requirements. Um, so definitely let me know if you're interested in any of them. For example, um, you know, some of them are, might require training in a portfolio versus like some of them, for example, the forensic scholarship might uh, require you to participate in our forensics team as part of the, uh, the scholarship requirements. Um, so definitely um, check these ones out. There are different um, amounts and again, um, they have different qualifications, but they're all listed on our website and of course you can always reach out to me about them. All right, so how can you get into Governor State? As I talked about earlier, we require a 2.75 unweighted high school GPA um, and a minimum ACT score of a 19 or an SAT score of 980. And we do also offer conditional admission if um, students have between a 2.25 and a 2.74 GPA and or if you have between a 15 through 18 ACT or 790 to 970 SAT. Um, again, I just want to review our guidelines for test optional. We were test optional for fall of 2020. If you have if you had an um, unweighted GPA of 2.75 or above, and we are continuing that for spring of 2021. Um, after that, we have um, not yet made a solid decision. Um, so again, not sure about being test optional, but of course. Keep in mind that although we are test optional for the spring, we would still need those uh, test scores in order for students to qualify for the AIM High scholarships that I talked about earlier. Um, so please definitely keep that in mind. So the way that you would apply if you're applying as a freshman student is that you would complete the application for admission online. It's a relatively 
and it's available online. It typically takes students about 30 minutes. We require official transcripts sent directly to transcripts at govst.edu. Um, and these have to be sent directly to Governor State um, or have your counselor directly send your transcripts to an admissions counselor. Um, it's important that they be sent directly from your um, school over to Governor State. Otherwise, they will not be counted as official and your application will not be counted as um, complete. If you have them sent electronically to us, or if you have them sent by um, mail, you can definitely give us a call at the main admissions line or um, contact a counselor and we can let you know the status of your application and then also let you know if we received those transcripts. I would recommend right now for them to be sent electronically because mail is taking a little bit longer than usual. Um, and we're also available on campus. Um, so if you need to drop in, um, transcripts or any other supplemental documents, please feel free to uh, come to um, campus um, and then make sure that they're sealed and they've never been opened and they'll be counted as official as long as it's coming directly from your um, school, but as long as it's sealed, you can drop them off and we can collect them that way as well. We are um, open on campus, so our financial aid office is open as well. So if you have any questions about, you know, for either admissions or financial aid, you can feel free to um, stop by. Um, however, we do have very limited staff uh, right now on campus. For example, I'm available only on Tuesdays in the office, but um, there is staff coverage from Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. Other than that, other than the transcripts and the application, we also require the ACT or SAT score. Um, again, unless you are coming in for the spring or unless you are and you're at that 2.75 on weighted or above, or um, you might not have to send these separately if they're already listed on your official high school transcript. So sometimes they will be listed at the bottom of your transcript. And if this is the case, um, then we will count these as official scores and you won't have to submit it from the SAT or ACT website. And uh, right now we are waiving the application fee for freshmen, but if for some reason um, there is some kind of a glitch in and um, it's asking you for a code, please let me know um, and I can give you the fee waiver code. For transfers, um, the requirements are a little bit different. For in order to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are very transfer friendly. So um, what we would consider a transfer is any uh, student that's coming in and transferring with 24 credit hours of college coursework and above, um, then they would be, we, they'd be considered a transfer. So even if you, let's say you have 20 credit hours and you're gone to a different school, um, you would still be considered a freshman student and would have to cons uh, apply through our freshman um, admissions process um, since you have below that 24 credit hours. So just something to keep in mind. Um, and then we require for most programs, it's a 2.0 or higher uh, cumulative GPA with a few of our programs um, having special requirements. So for example, education has a little bit of a higher GPA, uh, health administration, social work has additional documents, um, nursing has additional requirements as well. You have to have an RN if you're transferring in. Um, and then you also have to be in good standing at the last institution you attended. Um, so definitely, you know, if you're depending on your major, you might have different things to turn in. But for the most part, for most majors, you'll need to to apply as a transfer. You'll need um, 24 or more credit hours of college coursework. You'll need at least a 2.0 and in good standing at your last institution. For transfer students, the application process is um, pretty similar, but it is different. So for example, um, you would have to fill out the transfer application instead, um, which is still relatively simple, to, still takes about the same amount of time, about 30 minutes. It's a $25 application fee. However, um, if again, if you need an application fee waiver, please reach out to me and I can give you um, a fee waiver code. You also would need, um, and this is very important, we would need to have receive all of your official transcripts sent from any college or university you previously attended. So let's say you even have your associate's degree and you receive that from a, um, a school, we would still need any university or college 
um, transcripts um, that you've attended before that. And again, um, same thing as for high school students, they would have to come directly from your college or university. Otherwise, it would not be accepted as official. So, um, and same ways to drop them off. You can either drop them off by um, mail, by dropping them off in person or being sent electronically. Again, I don't recommend electronically just because that would be the quickest way for us to receive it. And then of course, definitely check for additional admission requirements such as for social work, which we require the letters of recommendation. Um, if you're interested in nursing for transfer students, we do require that RN license. Um, so please uh, keep all of these things in mind, but the most important thing is that you turn in all official transcripts. That's typically what takes students the longest and typically um, what prevents students from being their applications marks complete is that we don't have all of the other transcript or all of their transcripts. All right, so um, you are probably wondering how to get in contact with us right now since we're um, in this mostly virtual format. Um, so right now, all of our classes are mostly online with a couple of them being um, in person, such as if there's any performance, like a lot of the ones in theater and performing arts are still in person. Um, but of course, we're following CDC guidelines and the state's guidelines as well to be safe. And then we are also, um, a, a few of the labs as well are in person too. So, but for the most part, most of them are either online or in a hybrid option. As far as our actual campus, um, again, we are open from Monday through Thursday for admissions and financial aid and um, from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we are also working from home and we also have access to that main admissions line and also our direct um, office lines. So definitely feel free to still give us a call. Um, and then we have a lot of uh, different ways that we've started to offer students to get in contact with us as well. So um, the most popular option right now that students can get in contact with us is our virtual admissions appointments. So these are available online um, and we offer them every day, Monday through Friday, anytime from 10 a.m. and the latest one is at 3.30 p.m. And these uh, appointments are one-on-one -on -one virtual appointments with a counselor. Um, so that way, you know, you can get all of your questions out of the way um, and we can answer any questions that you have. Um, also, these appointments are also available in Spanish. So if either um, you would prefer to have it in Spanish or maybe, um, you know, if your families would prefer to hear it in Spanish, these are available on Mondays and Fridays. Um, so please definitely let us know if you would like to make an appointment with us. Um, you can also, if you go onto our admissions website, you can actually make the appointment yourself. We um, offer it, them any, again, any time between that, eight, uh, that 10 a.m. and that um, 3.30 p.m. So as long as that half hour time slot is not taken yet, um, you can feel free to sign up at that time. Um, so again, that's our most popular option. And also if you would still prefer to make an appointment, but um, you would rather that we give you a call instead, um, we can also do that as well. So either way, somebody will get in contact with you. We are also offering virtual chat through our website. So maybe you're um, you know, scrolling through our website online and you're hoping to get a question answered, but you, know, you don't really feel like making an appointment or uh, maybe you just feel comfortable just typing your question. So we do have um, counselors available at all times from 8.30 to 5 p.m. And we would get an automatic notification when somebody um, sends in a chat question. So you would get an answer live. Again, this is available from Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5 p.m. Um, through our website. We're also starting to do, or we've also done uh, virtual tours of campus and our housing. Um, so this is definitely another great way to get in contact with us as well. And all of these different options to get in contact with us are available at our website that you can see up on the screen, which is um, govst.edu um, slash admissions. Different um, upcoming events that we have is we have our virtual open house. This is from November 4th. The next one that's coming up is November 14th. It's typically always on a Saturday. Um, we just had our last one on October 12th. And then um, 
Afghan Arab Milan is on November 14th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And during this um, open house, we have specific sessions for freshman students, transfer students, and grad students. So um, just know that we'll have something that's specifically um, catered to whatever um, questions you have. We also are participating in a transfer week. So tomorrow is actually our last transfer week presentation, and um, it has a it's a presentation on, um, I believe, either, um, I think it's some type of uh, the part of the transfer process. So if you have any questions about that, please definitely um, check that out on our website. We also have an event called Coffee with a Counselor that happens twice a month. And this is basically a um, similar to an admissions appointment, but this would be in a group setting. So. If you're interested in talking with a counselor, but maybe you feel more comfortable talking in a group setting, or maybe you're not sure what to ask, so you want to hear what other students are asking, this is a really great um, way for you to get in contact with us. The next upcoming one that we have is on Wednesday, October 28th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and also, um, you don't have to stay for the whole time. So, you know, if you just want to go and get your questions answered, please, please sign up for that. Um, and then over on the right, you can see, um, although we do offer guided virtual tours, I do also want to say that we do offer a uh, Q, we do have a QR code in which you can um, go through the virtual tour yourself. And it's actually, um, you know, there are videos embedded, uh, so it's still pretty interactive. Um, I would highly recommend it. The You can... Um, use your phone to access it through the QR code, or if for some reason that doesn't work, you can always um, enter the URL that's below it um, in order to see it. And of course, it's available on our website as well. All right, um, so that is it for my um, presentation. I will go back to my... Um, Contact information so that way you all can um, see that again. My name again, my name is Karina Hernandez. Um, if you have any questions either about um, the how to come in as a freshman student, how to come in as a transfer student, what the student experience was like, um, please, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you out. Um, and then if not, um, if you have a question for a specific, um, that's a little bit more specific about our resources or anything like that and I can't answer it, I'd be happy to put you in contact with somebody who can answer that for you. Um, and then feel, I also want to invite you to, again, check out all of our different virtual events and um, stay connected with us um, if you're interested. And then, if not, um, you know, if you just have a question, please feel free to reach out as well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, so a couple of things, once you close this, uh, this webinar out, you will receive a quick survey. It's a quick four question survey. If you could fill that out, we would really appreciate it. Um, additionally, you can sign up for more sessions, as I mentioned earlier, through the IACAC.org website. And as a reminder, this session was recorded and is available um, also at that same IACAC.org website. Well, thank you everyone and have a great day.